Well, welcome back. Lot Talk, powered by Lot Pop, episode six. We are in the month of December. We're coming up at the end of the year. Guys, this is going to be absolutely positively one of our best series yet. Now, this series, we decided to call it Bucket Management, and I cannot wait to dive into Bucket Management. I'm Chris Keen. I'm one of your co-hosts. Joining me are my great friends, our Chief Executive Officer, our Executive Vice President, Mr. John Anderson, our Director of Training and Performance Engineering, Mr. Ronaldo Leonard. Gentlemen, tell me how excited are you guys to help the rest of our automotive community take all the suck out of the job we do each and every day, and let's try to make it a little bit easier and get ourselves prepared with bucket management to end 2024 and go into 2025. John, what do you think, brother? I'm always excited, man. Anytime we get a chance to to uh, take what we're seeing out there and and uh, and organize it, hopefully organize it because there's a lot out there. But <laughs> organize it and uh, and then you know find a way to deliver that back hopefully to, uh, to dealers that, that come across our podcast, um, or are listening, um, always excited about that, the give back, right. And we've all, you know, the three of us have talked about this, um, quite a bit, right. How good, um, this industry has been to each of us. Right. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I think the Bible speaks to that, right. Too much is given much is required. Right. So, mm-hmm. uh, I think that's, that's what excites me about this. It's a way for us to kind of take some of this information we're seeing on a weekly basis. Uh, some of the similar struggles we're seeing with our dealer partners and pass that on and, and try to help through that. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. New segment, oh, no too. New, new segment this month. Yes. Yes. New segment, bucket management. Ronaldo, when you hear bucket management, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, dude. Well, it always leads me back to, two of our driving pillars, you know, first of all, to help dealers sell, uh, what they're stocking stock, what they're, what they're selling. Uh, mm-hmm. but with that also making sure that they sell the majority of their inventory out of the first 30 days that it's in inventory. And, yeah. you know, as we move into the next year, a lot of dealers are sitting there scratching their head and they're trying to figure out, well, how do I make sure that I don't repeat 2024 <laughs> in 2025? And, you know, our conversations as we're planning and um, putting strategies together to work with our dealer partners, you know, it came up that bucket manager is probably the biggest way that we can impact a dealer's inventory every single day. And here we are. So that's that's the first thing that came to mind for me. And I'm looking forward to diving into this. I'm locked, cocked and ready to rock. Let's get after it. (laughs) That's what I love. So, you know, the title and I'm going to kind of jump all over the place here, but the title of you know today's episode around the whole theme of bucket management, you know, does your bucket have a hole in it? Now, before we kind of unpack that a little bit more, I kind of want to give our listeners and our viewers what's to come. Now, last episode, I mean, we had the amazing Stacy, the CRM queen. We had her kind of put a bow on, um, the series that we talked about of no more shooting fish in the barrel. Now, due to some scheduling conflicts, unfortunately, she wasn't able to kind of get with us this week, but we're going to get with her again very, very soon and look forward to that coming out, guys. So note that we're going to kind of bounce around a little bit here. Today, we're going to talk about some bucket management, but starting and airing very, very soon is some things back from Stacy, and we're going to take one of the top one, two, maybe even three questions, and we're going to unpack those some more. But as the weeks come, listen, earmark this. Set this as a favorite. Set this as an alert. Mark it on your calendar. You're not going to want to miss this, especially for every inventory manager that's out there, every GM that's out there, every used car manager, every dealer principal that's out there. You're not going to want to miss this because we also got some special guests that are going to be joining us at the end of this series to really take everything that we've unpacked 
everything that we keep finding throughout the weeks with the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of calls that our company gets the opportunity to do business with each and every day, each and every week, we're going to talk about, you know, uh, overall bucket management. We're going to talk about how big of a hole, if any hole does your bucket have in it. We're going to talk about the invasion of the body snatchers. And then we're going to talk about the teacher and the student. And all of this is going to come around bucket management. I just, I, I'm so excited. Now, John, you and I were talking about it and Ronaldo, we were talking about the other day. I mean, we could take 52 weeks and talk about bucket management. But John, when you think about bucket management, if we think back to before we even had all this cool software to manage this inventory, I mean, if we think about back in the day, how did you manage your inventory back then? I'm surprised there. I'm surprised there wasn't a, an old age blow in there that I usually get on this. On oh, this it's, coming. <laughs> it's uh, coming! It's coming, brother. I, I'm just letting you walk into it. I'm letting you walk into it this time. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, you know, really, uh, Chris. It was there were a couple different ways. One, I'm a huge Tommy Gibbs fan, so if anybody knows Tommy out there, right. It was always every day you go in and find your 10 most expensive vehicles, right? So that's one way of, of mm -hmm. you know, trying to manage inventory the old school way to where you're not letting inventory that has the high risk of not getting uh, traffic on it uh, age in your inventory. Another way uh, that we, you know, I would, I would order in the computer, I would arrange my inventory and then print out a sheet and obviously keep that in front of me that way. Um, uh, so I was always looking for, always looking at my oldest aged inventory um, and always looking at those 10 most expensive vehicles is kind of what I looked at on a, on a daily basis. Right. And, and there, as we get into this somewhat, um, you know, that's, I do want to, to address a couple of those things, right. Of, cause when you're, when you start talking about bucket management, right, you can get yourself, uh, which I learned from our CEO, um, when he was working with me, when I was at a store, right. You can get yourself into a little bit of trick bag, um, in bucket management. If you're just focused, mm -hmm. if you constantly focus on a aged inventory. So there's a little bit of teaser. We'll get to that, but that's how I primarily looked at it. Um, before we had the tools we have today. So you printed yours out on a sheet of paper. So yep. was it a dot printer or did y'all use like use a scribe and a scroll and like a chisel? It was, I mean, it was, it was, was going. it was a scroll. <laughs> yeah. I had to so take that pen. Roll that, it out. Yeah. I had to, what was, what were those old pens called? Uh, litho, um, What's the old, the art, lith lithography, right? Is that what it's called? I could be butchering. Oh, it. calligraphy. Calligraphy. Thank you. I was butchering it. Calligraphy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the pen, dot it on my tongue, dip it in the ink, and write my inventory <laughs> list out. Did you have a feather? Did you have was, a feather on top yeah, of the Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, it was quite a pigeon a, feather. Yeah, yeah. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's John. Oh. And the bad part is, is you, and Tommy Gibbs, if you're listening, we love you. Tommy, you're like one of the godfathers of this. Just John is like the peepaw of all this. But, you know, you really kind of dated yourself when you threw Tommy in there, too. So, Tommy everybody been around knows, for a cool minute. Everybody knows Tommy. Everybody knows Tommy. Mm -hmm. oh, so, it's, and if I did the same thing. I mean, I, I printed the sheet out, and I had my oldest one on there. And, you know, it, I, had, I used a clipboard. But then when we were moving it shake and I pulled that thing long ways and I stuck it in my back pocket and then you open it up and you had the highlighter and the ruler. And yep. I mean, it was horrible. Uh, it, it was bad. You had little notes on there. Then two days later, you can't even read your own damn note because it's 112 outside. And the thing was in your back pocket and all the ink started bleeding because all the sweat. And yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. Ronaldo, would you use? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, I use the same thing that, that, uh, We've already mentioned, uh, but then I thought I was so progressive when I started plotting out spaces on the lot and how fast I was selling that real estate and would use that <laughs> in conjunction of my 
doc sheet where I would number the uh, highest priority of vehicles that needed to sell and go through that with my sales team on a regular basis. Uh, something that I think about now is just like, dude, how, how, how did you last two weeks? Uh, <laughs> you know, without getting run out of, run out of Dodge managing inventory that way. But you know, back then that's all we had. We had to, so you got and so we just yeah. kind of had to do the best we could with, uh, with what we had. Yeah. And, but you, when you think about it, Ronaldo, you were taking the right mindset towards that, right? Is how, how many times can I turn these spaces in a month? Right. Cause mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. that at the, at the basic form of it, there's bucket management, right? How many, how many times, you know, the faster I can turn these spaces, uh, the less, uh, holding cost I have, right. The more volume I create. Right. So that's right. at the very basic, that's, that's a good way to look at bucket management is, is making sure one, that every one of those spaces out there on that lot, either virtual or physical are filled. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Um, cause that's the most expensive real estate, right. Other than the showroom floor. Uh, I remember one of my owners, uh, used to, if there was a, if it's set for 15 minutes without a, without the showroom full of cars, he would always come by the sales desk and remind us, gentlemen, what's the most expensive real estate on the dealership? <laughs> the showroom floor. <laughs> showroom floor. Uh, showroom oh, yeah. Exactly. Floor. Oh, yeah. So yeah. just making sure you're rotating that inventory, right? Which again, yeah. all this leads to what we're talking about today. Yep. Oh, yeah. And and in yeah. the perspective that we were using, and I had my, my sales team so dialed in that they would sit there and they'd come to me, hey, uh, these uh these vehicles here are hitting that 35 day mark. We need to put them on hot spots, or how, how you want to do that? And I, you know, invariably I'd sit there and look at it. How long had that vehicle been in inventory? And we had five key spots that we identified that if we sat a vehicle there, it wasn't going to go any more than two days. And so strategically watching the time, and as they went down the dock sheet, making sure they hit one of those five spots, and and yep. keep, keep us rolling. Yeah. Very cool. Pull in the gate, got your rows, the end caps, mm -hmm. usually over your hot spots. Yep. Then you had that spot around the apron. That yep. was usually a pretty good hot spot. Oh, and then don't forget the ramp. We had the mm -hmm. ramps at the corner of a lot. Yep. That nobody will ever want to pull a car up on. Hey, has anybody uh has anybody witnessed a car driving off the ramp or falling off the ramp? Oh no, I've Absolutely. been lucky. Both, both on, both on the ramp for display and and the lift back in service department. Unfortunately, <laughs> I've seen that too. So, okay, I got, I got to tell y'all, I bought a load of cars one time at the sale, and I'm sitting in the conference room eating lunch one day. Transport driver comes walking in. He's got his old head down. He's just kind of shaking his head. <laughs> nope. and I looked at him, and I'm literally I'm in the middle of eating my lunch, and jokingly I said to him. I said, let me guess, one fell off the back of the truck and you're dragging it all the way up here from Dallas. And he says, well, not quite. And the room went silent. And I looked at him. I was like, I was kidding, but you sound like you're not. Says, yeah, I didn't drag it from Dallas. But what happened was, and when he said that, I was like, oh, my God, what happened? <laughs> what Again, happened? He was taking, <laughs> you see, what had happened it was when he was dragging one off the top rack, it died, like ran out of gas. Do you know how like the brakes won't completely work? Everything just kind of died. Killed a Jeep, a Jeep Liberty falls off the top that he's backing down, and then he loses control and somehow falls to the bottom rack and crashes into a Chrysler 300. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. No bueno. Yeah. No so, bueno for the caca. Yeah, that was no bueno. I digressed. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so <laughs> see what I, I but was. anyway. See what had happened. It was oh my god, it was horrible. Um, you know, uh, we were looking, we were looking at some things that we're seeing on the front line today, and you know, we we pulled up some of our data that we lay across some black book data, some of the data that we lay across at uh, here at Lot Pop. And one of the things I definitely wanted to make sure that the viewers of our podcast got an opportunity to see, and for those that are listening, I want you to really listen close to this. 
this is kind of alarming. And again, for those that are viewing, you can see my screen right now. When you sit here and look at it and you look at this black line, it looked really positive there for a minute in the days to retail turn started coming down. Even though that red line, the shopper index was coming down, but the shoppers that are out there were making decisions faster. But now you look at it and it's starting to tick back up. And now the days to retail turn are all the way back up to 49 days. John, what do you, what do you make of that? It's, you know, we addressed this earlier. We addressed this stuff earlier on in, in one of our podcasts is, you know, there's a lot of variables that go into this. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. And, and so without getting too long winded in this area, right. Um, typically this time of year, you just have, you just have lower shopper counts, right. Which you're, I mean, you're seeing, and again, for those of you listening, um, you know, the trend, the trend of, of shopper activity is dropping off. Right. And so, you know, I think, you know, there was a tick up there in, uh, or, or that, that day supply dropped off for a little bit, it's starting to round back up. But I think a lot of that reasoning that you were seeing, uh, a drop there in sales wise. And I did, you know, we were talking about this last week, you know, there, there were a lot of vehicles that were lost in that hurricane that come up the East coast. Right. And so when you talk about auction pricing, that was staying up. Right. And then you see, you know, that down, that dramatic down tip, um, in, uh, retail days to turn, right. It dropped off pretty dramatically there. And I think that's when you saw a lot of replacement going on of that inventory. And now it's starting to round back up and you're starting to see, mm -hmm. uh, you're starting to see that shopper index drop back off and therefore that two week retail percentage drop back off. So I think, you know, that hurricane had an effect, uh, in that short period of time there. Um, where I think, I think that was where you saw a lot of that because not only dealers had to replace their inventory, but obviously people that were able to get back on their feet in a relatively, I know there, unfortunately there's a lot of folks I feel terrible for that they're not back on mm. their feet in that situation. But for those that did get back on their feet, you know, they had to replace inventory. So I think that's where you saw a lot of that. That's just my opinion. Um, but you typically don't see a tip like that this time of year. And that was a pretty dramatic one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't, you know, again, we talk about the natural disaster that happened. And I think this is a really good time for us to really stop and, you know, count our blessings that we didn't have to deal with that. But again, it still extend out to, you know, the people affected by that, you know, our hearts are definitely with you guys because yeah. there's still people that are, are, are wading through, all of that mess. There's still yep. people fighting with their insurance. There's still people, you know, whether it's the consumer public fighting with their insurance just to replace their personal vehicle to go back and forth to work, or there's still some of you know, the dealer partners that are out there and some of the, our brothers and sisters in the automotive community that are still fighting with these challenges. And, you know, please know that well, if there's anything, living, a lot of them are living in tents. Mm -hmm. yeah a I lot mean, of them are living in this time of year I mean, up in that area it's not it's not warm anymore folks so yeah i mean let's let's try not to forget these folks man because a lot of those folks are still without sure. everything so and then you know for for our automotive community that's still out there and they're still fighting with these things yeah we can't say this enough uh lotpop.com you know find john find ronaldo find myself find brett branstead or our coo find jason rice our our president founder and ceo find any of our contact information on there and for any of you dealer partners that are out there that are just trying to figure out you know hey what's next H how do we handle our inventory from here we still have some of our inventory though it may be damaged we didn't lose it to flood plus we've got more inventory coming in for any of y'all dealers that are out there that still need some additional help just want another set of eyeballs listen at no charge yeah. Go to lotpop.com, find us. We will be happy to just help give you another thought, give you another idea. Because though that was months ago, we know it's still real for you right now. 
please reach out to us. We want to give back. We want to help. So keep that in mind, automotive community. Lot Pop is here to help in any way, shape, or form that we possibly can. But back to you know this chart here, you know, the shopper index at a 41% and trending downward. You know, Ronaldo, you spent a lot of time onboarding our new dealers that come on with us at Lot Pop. You know, with these new dealers coming on and that shopper index trending downward, how do you see that affecting bucket management? Well, the you know, the biggest thing that I like to point out when a new dealer is coming in is the difference between a, a dealer that's got solid processes in place and one that is kind of, mm. you know, they're operating in a reactive mode. Uh, you see those dealer counts start to decline and it's a chicken little moment. You know, the sky is falling. What, what do we have to do to get this taken care of? But for our dealer partners that have kind of taken, taken a, a, mo a moment back, to look at the processes and implement processes that we're going to allow them to manage their buckets uh, effectively, you know, statistics like that will pay uh, a certain uh, effect on what their inventory is doing. But what we see is that the, uh, the troughs, as I like to call mm. it, you got your peaks and your valleys, but those troughs, those moments where you are in a low spot in the number of units that you're selling and the amount of time that it takes you to sell them, those are are short lived. You know, everybody's going to be affected by you know that type of data. Shopper counts down, um, but if you're taking the time to go ahead and situate your processes and make sure that everything is uh, is in order, you're going to continue to do business as usual. You're just going to see that 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 small amount of time between your two uh, peaks. Uh, it's going to it's going to shorten, and so with dealers that are coming in and new to bucket management philosophy, you know, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because they're still in that set it and forget it mode that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> let me, let me buy a car. I'm going to put a number on it. Somebody's going to show up eventually and take it off our hands rather than looking at it strategically and, uh, and managing exactly how we're working those vehicles. So there isn't bleed through in our age buckets. Uh, but yeah, new, new dealers, they have a lot of a lot of work to do in order to get those processes in place. Um, but across the board, we're still we're still suffering the effects of COVID, where we can sit back, take orders, and the inventory is going to turn itself and take care of itself. Uh, but that that bucket that's why bucket management is so important because it sets you up for success no matter what the uh, outside influences are, are telling us or showing us we've got we've got processes in place to make sure that we give ourselves the best opportunity to make sure that that inventory doesn't bleed out on us and uh, it doesn't sit on the long on the lot any longer than necessary does that make sense yeah no that makes complete sense i mean it's when we think about bucket management as a whole I mean, if we had to really define, if we really had to define and, and thinking about just our overall topic this week, introducing bucket management, if we had to really think about, you know, what is bucket management? Some people look at it as, oh, don't let anything get to 60 days. But then to your point, Ronaldo, you've got that dealer that's more in a proactive approach to things versus reacting to the old school way that we talked about a minute ago when you printed out the printed out the the inventory sheet and you had your highlighter and your pen and your pencil and all that out and printing it out from your oldest to your newest and just working from the bottom up, if you will. Well, is that really bucket management? No. Because when we really think about our core pillars here at Lot Pop sell what you stock, stock what you sell, and do everything in the first 30. Well, how could you possibly manage your buckets that way if you're working from your oldest to your newest? Because now you're just constantly having that bleed through. You're constantly having that bleed through. You know, that's talking about that hole in the bucket. And John, you kind of described that really well earlier. 
uh, in the last week when we were talking about, you know, hey, what are we going to talk about? What's our next subject? And it was around bucket management. And the title of today's, you know, uh, uh, segment, having that hole in your bucket, does your bucket have a hole in it? Talk a little bit about what you shared with Ronaldo and I from when you first started as a dealer partner before you became an employee of Lot Pop and how Jason would talk to you about bucket management. Talk about that with our viewers, with our listeners for a minute. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was doing what a lot of people do and we see when we when we onboard a new dealer or we talk to, we're doing a demo with a dealer um, and they're and they're gracious enough to share their inventory management uh, mm -hmm. or tool with us so we can look and see, you know, how their inventory is flowing, right? And so I did what a lot of dealers do, um, right? Because typically there's two focuses in a dealership. One, you've got the fresh focus, right? So you've traded for or you purchase a unit or units and they come in. And then we have all that work that needs to go into, you know, we, we've got to, um, uh, I would walk out and I would look at the vehicle. Um, I would kind of get an overview of how I felt about the vehicle. I would pencil notes on the windshield, wax pencil on the windshield for my service uh, manager. And, and mm -hmm. then that vehicle goes into the process, right? So it's, it's in service and then it gets out of service and then it goes into detail. Right. And we're focused on that because days to lot ready are so important, right? Especially when you're talking about if you want 65% or higher sales out of that first 30 days. Right. And it's, it's when you guys, I, I want to put, uh, and I know I appreciate the comments we get and I'm sure somebody's going to comment differently and I'm fine with that. And I'd be more than happy to enter into discussion, but I want to put to bed when you, when you cut a check for that vehicle, the clock starts, right? Um, yeah. This has been a constant debate that we hear from dealers. Well, you know, until that thing's ready to go, we don't put it into retail inventory. Well, then you're kidding yourself, right? Because when that, you know, I find it hard to believe that um, people would think any different than they think about uh, their customers, right? When their customers come in, right? Depreciating asset it starts at day one. Once we, once we buy that car. Now we had a couple of years around COVID where that wasn't the case, but that's all history now. So, you know, once you, once you trade or cut that check, that, that clock's ticking. So getting that through that process. So we're so focused on that, that fresh inventory coming in and getting that inventory that that's where we spend a lot of our time. And then once we, once we move off that inventory, let's say we've got that caught up for the day. Typically what we do is we jump right to any aged inventory that we have. So anything, whatever your aging policy is, right. I would, I would suggest that dealers nowadays move towards a 45 day age policy, but most dealers we hear are either 60, 75 or 90, mostly 60. So any inventory mm -hmm. that I have sitting at 60 days or longer, right. I shift my focus to that. And the problem is, and that's what exactly what I was doing. You're referring to Chris and what I talked to you guys about is the problem that I learned when I started meeting with Jason on a weekly basis is I was, I would shift my focus to that aged inventory and I might sell five today and tomorrow five more would drop in. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't, I wasn't managing my buckets. I, you know, I was, I was letting the inventory bleed through. It was dropping down through from zero to 15, 16 to 30, 31 to 45, 46 to 60, and then 61 day plus. And then, so I very rarely, paid attention to that middle buck inventory, which we find a lot of dealers don't that. And I found out, which really surprised me that that middle bucket inventory is really the most critical inventory, right? To get a handle on, on understanding how to, how to maneuver and work my aging buckets. That middle bucket inventory is extremely critical. And it's typically the last inventory that gets paid attention to at a dealership. Yeah. No, you're spot on, John. And, you know, we were talking about just a minute ago and Ronaldo kind of brought it up, you know, about those valleys and those troughs and those highs and those lows. And for those watching, you know, on the podcast, I'm sharing my screen here. Uh, we'll get Brett to cue that up here. But on my screen, what you're seeing here, this is a prime example 
Okay, green line trending downward, which means their inventory counts going down. But then all of a sudden you see right inside here, oh, my inventory is coming down. Hey, I'm selling some cars. Oh, wait a minute. I'm out of cars. I need to go buy some cars. Oh, now I've got all this service downline problem. My processes aren't tight, my recon. And then my sell rates come back down again. So it's that's a form of the bucket management that we talk about. And John, I know you had a very healthy conversation with our dealer partners the other day about this. Ronaldo, you coach this, you know, with our new dealers and even with our existing dealers all the time that consistent acquisition strategy as well plays into that bucket management because we see very similar situations like this all the time. The inventory goes straight down. Yeah, we're selling some cars, but then we got to go retool the inventory and it never fails. That sale rate comes all the way back down again. I mean, Ronaldo, what is, in your opinion, and even beyond opinion, because you're training this every day, you're working with our performance engineers every single day. Why is this a problem for dealers in bucket management? I think it's a pro, you know, once again, it's just, it goes back to whether or not you want to position yourself to be in a proactive mode or a reactive mode. And, you know, when we talk about WTF, working the facts, a big part of it is knowing exactly how many dollars or how many units of your inventory you have sitting in those particular buckets attaching that to exactly what your sales pace is in order to be mm -hmm. able to know and stay ahead of the curve with how you need to bring that inventory in and not be affected by, you know, what other issues you might have, you know, you mentioned in the downline process of getting that vehicle photoed and up right. and merchandised online or the ability to be able to get it through recon. So that it's physically ready to be placed on the front line. And, but the we've just been in that mode for so long that we can react to whatever the conditions are going to bring us. And But that inventory is going to move eventually, sooner or later. But by taking our you know eyes off the ball and the entire picture and how everything is affected by whether we're being proactive or reactive, just kind of resting on our laurels and, and knowing that eventually that vehicle is going to sell. It may be 150 days from now. It may be 45 days from now, but it's going to leave. Uh, but not having a strategy behind how do I get this inventory position so that it does leave before day 45, as opposed mm -hmm. to taking back 130, 45 days uh, before it actually does. And it, but it, I, I don't, I don't think we're too far removed or I don't think it's too far out of line because a lot of people have shared this with myself and I know you guys have heard it as well. 15 is the new 30, 30 is the new 45 and 45 is the new 60 day. Right. And with as quick as our market is moving, mm -hmm. you know, I'd be curious in, if you would drop it in the comment below before those watching this podcast I'd be curious how many of you listeners out there, how many of you viewers out there are of that same mindset that 15 days is the new 30 days, 30 days is the new 45, 45 being the new 60. And if you're of that mindset, I'd be really curious. What is your plan when a car gets to 30 day? What is your plan when it gets to 15 day? What is your plan when it gets to 45 day? Or are you still looking at this saying, well, the market day supply is a 47 and I'm 32 days into it. I'm okay for a, a little bit longer. Or are you really looking at your activity or lack thereof? Because when we really think about, when we really think about this whole bucket management, John, you know, it becomes extremely necessary, especially when ownership is really starting to look at their cash again and really starting to see on their financial statements 
that that net to gross percentage has really started coming down. I mean, there's not guys out there clocking that 35, 45, 50% net to gross anymore, John. And that cash is starting to tighten up. So in a few short words, why would you say, thinking from an ownership, thinking from an operator, thinking from somebody who's responsible for the financial statement, why is bucket management necessary? Did you just tell me a few short words? Well, I tried. I mean, you know me, Chris. Come on. No, I, in, all, in all seriousness, I, I think I need to clarify a couple things. Uh, look, guys, um, I get it, man. Um, on, on certain time, here's what I would say to dealers out there. Measure your bucket. Measure your bucket management on a overtime consistent basis, right? Mm -hmm. um, we see it a lot, right? We see where um, dealers fall into a, uh, a period of time where things are going really smooth. The, the inventory is flowing uh, and they're having success. But then mm -hmm. when, you, when we backdate that data that we look at on a daily basis, what do we typically see? And this is what, look, to answer your question, Chris, if I'm a dealer principal, and I get it, guys, dealer principals now, right? I, I've heard it, right? A lot of dealer principals are comparing what you're doing now to back in COVID days. Now, while that might not be fair, he's the dealer principal. Uh, it's his right, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, our job, and I think I said this on an earlier podcast, and I'll say it again, our number one job as a manager at a dealership is to return dollars with our, our owners. So our return on investment. Our owners have their dollars invested in that used car inventory, that new car inventory. So w what they're interested in, you're much like a, a broker, a stock broker, an investment yeah. portfolio man, an investment portfolio manager. Understand it. Now, I, that that owner's looking for the highest rate of return on his invested dollars in that inventory. And so, how do I get that highest rate of return? It's by consistently managing my buckets. Uh, with with the higher percentage of that inventory sitting on the lot in zero to 30 day. So for us, it's, you know, and I hear the reason why I say highest percentage, because I hear different people say different things for, for, for lot pop and lot pop dealer partners, we're managing that to 65%. So 65% of mm -hmm. your, of your inventory sitting on the lot needs to be in that zero to 30 day and selling the same way. I need to be selling on a consistent basis. So we trend it every day. And so we need to be selling 65% of our sales need to be coming out of that zero to 30 uh, day to maximize the return on investment every day. Right. And so as we're selling that inventory, yes, part of our responsibility is to reload. Right. And what's the mistake we see a lot of dealers make that causes this disruption in bucket management is they have a good weekend where they'll sell 20 cars and then they go out and they'll buy 30 and they bring them all in. And now all of a sudden, the, it, that's not the problem. It's not. If you're set up for that, the problem is, is when we start to see when we're working with our dealer partners and we start to get them, they get it right. It, it happened to me when I was working with Jason store started selling more inventory. Right. And now all of a sudden that puts downline pressure on other departments in my dealership my service department. Cause now I'm pushing mm -hmm. more inventory through the service department. Now I'm pushing more inventory through the detail department at a faster pace. Right. And if we haven't taken the time to adjust those areas, right. We can't, we can't, for instance, we can't have two used car techs dedicated to our used car inventory when we were stocking 50 units and selling 40. And now all of a sudden we're selling a hundred, we're stocking a hundred, selling a hundred, and we're still using two dedicated used car techs. That's not going to work. It's, it's going to backlog the system. So I have to think about those downline processes. How do I get those prepared for what's coming? Because that's where we see that that's, that has a lot to do with bucket management. And, and what we're really talking about is yes, everybody has highs, right? We're looking at what, the way to do that is more consistent. We have dealers we could show uh, where they're consistent month in, week in, a week out, month in and month out. They're consistent. They're selling what they're stocking and they're maintaining 65 to 70% of those sales coming out of their zero to 30 day. That's what you want to look for. 
because we can all point to times where we were, we hit those metrics. What I want to see is, are we doing it over a consistent basis? Because that's where you're mm-hmm. going to generate the highest return of investment for that dealer. And that's the number one job we have as managers of a store. So that being said, you used a word a lot there. And Ronaldo, I want to hear from you on this. John talked about you know, the consistency, the consistency, the consistency. Okay, we covered three very, three of very, three of five very important factors. We we covered what is bucket management. And again, this is just kicking off for the coming episodes as we dive deeper into this. You know, what is bucket management? Well, very simply put, selling and keeping sixty five percent of your inventory in the first thirty. Okay, why is it necessary? That's even more simple. That's the volume and not only the gross, because we understand that that's how, you know, a lot of our used car managers, GSM, sales managers, et cetera. That's how you guys are paid. You're paid off of the gross. Okay. But also why it is necessary beyond the volume, beyond the gross. When we think about the dealer principles, the ownership, they get to pay the bills off of the net profit. So, and they get to make their money off the net profit. So why is that bucket management necessary? Volume, gross profit, net profit. Right. But the question I have for you, Ronaldo, is what are one or two things that our dealer partners can do to consistently, as John spoke several times, what are one, maybe two things that they could do consistently to achieve that bucket management? Well, yeah, you know, the biggest thing that, that uh, why we want to drive that consistency is that ability to be able to plan. You know, John talked to it a moment ago. If you have two techs that are dedicated to a, a used car department that's selling 50 units a month as, as opposed to the 100 units that is the goal, um, you've got to have implemented a strategy and a plan with everybody's duties and responsibilities clear cut and defined and the standard set that's going to produce that consistency so that we know at the end of the month, this is what we're going to generate. This is how we're going to reinvest those dollars to create more revenue across the board for the dealership. And, but in order to be able to execute on that, which is the biggest failure that we see with the dealers that we talk about, the plans put in place, but the execution is lacking. And mm-hmm. so if when, you know, and we, you know, Chris, you've seen it a million times. If you've seen it once coach or John, if you've seen it once, you've seen it a million times getting into that mode of complacency. We've seen a couple of weeks of success Then we can sit back. We can take a deep breath uh, and let things, you know, it, it's automatically implemented and things are going to roll out. That accountability layer has to be in place in order to be able to drive that consistency. But the reason that we're looking for consistency is to be able to plug in those numbers, plan for the future and continue to execute on those plans to get the the end result. Turn over the biggest ROI that we possibly can with the resources that we've been trusted with. Uh, but if it's, if it's inconsistent and anybody who's listening to this or anybody who just walks through life on a daily basis, if there's some inconsistency mm-hmm. involved in something that you're expecting, it's almost incredible. It's almost impossible to be able to manage and to be able to plan moving forward. So, Driving that consistency is going to get us in the, into the point where we get to the situation where we see lift both in number of units that a dealership is selling and also in the uh, profit that they're generating. You know, yeah. in the past, there's always been that question. I mean, dealers have had to make a question on whether or not they were going to be a dealership that focused on volume or one that was focused on gross. And they've always had to make that uh, make that choice. But with the dealers that we visit with on a daily basis, you know, we tell them, you don't have to make that choice anymore. You could be a, a volume dealership that is generating tremendous gross on a consistent level. And um, in order to be able to do that and achieve that, 
yeah, that consistency in the small everyday uh, functionality of the plan and executing it on a regular basis, uh, that consistency is probably the biggest part, uh, probably just ahead of uh, accountability, those accountability layers that we put in place. But that consistency allows you to, to accomplish, you know, the goals that we've set out with our dealers. First of all, sell what you're stocking, stock what you're selling, but then also make sure that you're selling the majority of your inventory when it's most profitable. And it's in that first 30 day uh, that it's in inventory. Which is going to lead to the net profit that, Absolutely. You know, th that our dealers are looking for. Mm -hmm. So to kind of put a bow on that, to recap that one more time, you know, what is bucket management? Well, in our, the world of lot pop, selling and keeping 65% or more of your inventory in that first 30. Why is it necessary? Volume, gross. I mean, it's pretty much that simple. And then the consistency to be able to achieve that really comes down to formulating your plan, but not just formulating it, executing that plan and staying consistent with that plan as you start to see lift without deviation from that plan until it's time to deviate. Because there will be a time to deviate, but not while you're getting the lift. Right. Not while you're getting the lift. So we, we had a question a few episodes back that actually kind of, it was around shooting fish in the barrel and it was around, you know, our salespeople and, and selling and things of that nature, but it really tied into bucket management. And John, I mean, you got so excited when you saw this question from Vic out there. And I want you to really take that question, unpack that question for us for a moment before I've got a couple great announcements as we wrap up today's episode. But John, take that question for us because it was a really interesting one. Yeah, no, uh, Vic, Vic Jones sent us a question. Vic, I appreciate it very much. And I, I'm just going to read it. If the market comparison moves uh, 3% in three days, you're making a lot of assumptions by stating a dealer should just lower their price just to get back to 98%, i.e. other dealer uh, overage conditions, comparison, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which is a great point. And I think, um, you know, Vic brings up a great point and, and, you know, I was, I think a lot of times, um, we, at that point I was sharing some of the things that, you know, we see consistently when we're working with our dealer partners, right. Uh, you know, a lot of times I'll, and I'll use, um, one inventory management tool. A lot of our dealers use V auto. So a lot of times mm -hmm. when I'm, looking at their inventory and I'm seeing inventory that one does not have the biggest thing has no leads, no switch leads on it. Right. And it's, it's past 30 days. It's past the maximum time to get the highest rate of return. Right. I'll jump into that vehicle in V auto and I'll look at the trending on it. And one of the things I look at is that trend line of, of price to market. Right. And a lot of times I'll see where it's a set it and forget it. We put it at 12, seven, and we've left it there for 35 days. And when we started that at 12.7, that was 97% to market. And in that 35 mm -hmm. days that we've left it there and not done anything with the pricing, right? The 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 97% has now come up to 101, right? And so I was sharing that. And is that the only uh is that the only target? Is that the only thing to take in consideration is I automatically want to bring that back down to 97%? No, no. And, and mm -hmm. I wanted to clarify that. And again, I appreciate Vic reaching out and putting that question. The, the point to the point that I think we try to make as a team with our dealer partners is that's another, that's another, that's what we do, right? We put data out there, right? We have all these data points, right? Oh no, John, 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 we work the facts. I get it. I get it. But you I mean, Chris, the fact. how many times you're right, right. You're right. But how many times when we're, when we're either demoing or we have a new dealer and we hear, man, that's a lot of data. Right. And it is a lot of data, but it's not, it's not for consumption all at one time. Right. None of it is. No. It's, it's having, if we're, if we're, if we're, if we have a certain issue going on at our store, 
we want to make sure that they have the available data and us on a call on the consulting side to say, here's, here's what I'm seeing in that data, right? Here's where you guys may want to focus. Here's where you may want to adjust, right? Because we all have 30 years experience at the, at running dealerships, right? So do we know it all? No, we don't. But that's part of what this is, is a, it's, that's why we call it a partnership, right? We don't look at ourselves as vendors. It's a partnership and we're exchanging ideas, right? Hey, did you guys think about this? Right. And that's all mm-hmm. I was doing there is if I'm cost, sure. if I'm seeing, if I'm seeing a, a vehicle in my inventory and I've got no leads on it, I've got no switch opportunities on it on my lot. So we have no activity that that vehicle is past 30 days. Again, I've lost my maximum uh, potential for return on investment. Right. And I see that that market has dropped by three or four percent. Then to me, that's something that I got to acknowledge. Now there's some now now I put on my dealership hat. Right. It's like we say all the time. That's why it's a hand in glove. We bring it up, which is what I was doing. And Vic, to his credit, said, hey, that's not the only thing we need to look at. And he's exactly right. Right. We, but, but what I want, what I wanted to say by that is, are you, are you aware that that's happening? Right. First of all, I got to be aware. Once I'm aware now I've got now, like Vic said, I've got other, I've got options that I can do. And then we take what we feel like as a manager, our job is to take what we feel like is the best option to get a lead on this vehicle, to get a customer on it. Right. And so it may not be a dropping it back down to 97%. It might be that, you know, we've got several appointments today and I'm going to try to move a customer to that unit because I know it's not getting any activity and I'm going to try to move somebody that might be an option, but there are several options. But to the, to my point, w- one of those options may have to be that I've got to get it back down to where I was before because I'm going to have a savvy competitor out there in marketplace that may be adjusting his inventory. And w- with everything staying fairly, if a customer comes into the market and they're looking at vehicles, right. Um, and, and everything remaining pretty consistent, then one of those, one of those huge factors is going to be price, right? So if I'm, if I'm looking at two similar cars and this, this dealer has his price thousand dollars below mine, that customer is probably going to gravitate towards that lower price point car. Now, that, that's a great point there, John. And thank you for unpacking that. You know, Vic, thank you for, you know, watching this on YouTube and dropping that question in and, you know, viewers, you could obviously find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple Podcasts. You know, uh, listeners, same thing. You can find us there. Viewers, you can find us on YouTube. And when you do find us on those podcasts, there's a place for you to drop those questions. We invite them all. I would love if we could get, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a hundred questions that maybe pushes back against our thinking. Because to John's point, we, we don't know everything. And if there's another thought out there, and we'll give you all the credit for it, if there's another thought out there around bucket management, go to our YouTube channel. Drop that question in. Catch us on you know the, the Spotify. Catch us on the Apple you know, podcast there. Or just send me personally an email. C Keen, C-K-E-E, N as in Nancy, E, at lotpop.com. We are happy to take all those questions in, but better yet, better yet, if you don't catch us on Tuesdays when this podcast is airing, and if you're going to be at NADA 2025 down in good old New Orleans, if you come to booth 1219, we're going to have the hot seat. And if you give us a couple weeks notice, We'll take your inventory. We'll take your leads. And we'll unpack it together with John, Ronaldo, myself. But better yet, we'll probably have one of the godfathers himself, the bucket management, Mr. Jason Rice, our president, founder, CEO, the very first performance manager ever. He'll unpack it. And he'll show you some different ways to better manage your inventory. Booth 1219, NADA 2025, 
down in New Orleans. We're going to be there. Booth 1219. Come see us. We'd love to have you in the hot seat. Or we could even have a private meeting because the up bus is going to be there. We get down inside the up bus, take your inventory, completely give you a full analysis. Would love to do that as well. So to wrap it all up, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Leonard, bucket management is going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to get into the rest of the episodes, the rest of the topics around it. I can't wait to get a bunch of questions around bucket management. I can't wait to get some pushback around it because at the end of the day, we're going to work the facts. We're going to talk about bucket management. We're going to give back to this automotive community. We're going to help our brothers and sisters go into 2025 with more of the highs, less of the lows, take all the suck out of what we do in inventory and lead management. And we're going to invite you to come push back against us on Lot Talk, powered by Lot Pop. I'm Chris Keen, one of your co-hosts. On behalf of Mr. John Anderson, on behalf of Mr. Ronaldo Leonard, we thank you for tuning in. Catch us again next Tuesday, and we're going to unpack more of bucket management right here on Lot Talk. Thank you, guys.